Hi, this is Shadi. Today we're going to be discussing a topic that's been requested quite a lot. It is the five-time Olympian and silver medalist in 1992, the legendary Jason Morris. He truly made his judo shine in wrestling and today we're going to see exactly that. So he had a massive O Soto Makikomi among other throws. So here it is. It is like O Soto Gari, but finished with a wrap uh, around and going down and sacrificing himself. So he was very big on this throw, especially with the entanglement that happens on the upper body. So this particular throw is like a major outer reap, but you'll let go of the lapel and you wrap your opponent around you as you go down. It is a massive throw and it can be quite dangerous, especially with big guys. And here you can see it uh, on Uke as he gets a lot of weight on to his head as it happens. So you can do it a little bit slowly. Sometimes people post their forearm and then launch the rest of their body but here you see it's it is just absolutely devastating and there's many variations to this throw so now i want to talk about this here you see the single leg turned into uchi mata and this is one of the reasons why leg grabs should always be there not only for perfecting the upper body throws in case your gripping is weak but also in order to defend against these types of grips. This is Ishii demonstrating the Uchimata counter against a single leg attack. So he cups his own thigh. This is on judofanatics.com. And so what he does is he cups his own thigh, uh, giving him the overhook. And from there he reaps the inner thigh. And trust me, it works. And uh, You can see Morris doing it. So here he has an overhook throwing a classical Uchimata. And I've said this before that when it comes to Gi and no Gi, I would say once you get that distance closed, no Gi becomes much easier. And I'll tell you why. Because in order to get a good forward throw, you need to have you really need to have that torso to torso connection, the side of the torso here in the Uchimata or Harai Goshi or whatever it is. And all the variations of Uchimata require this one uh, good element and that is the connection of the torso. But doing it from the classical grip of the lapel, sometimes you can create that distance and a lot of people just dive their head while the guy is still standing. But with overhooks and uh, Russian arms and Oku Eri, you see a lot less of that. That's why people prefer them. So another technique that he was great at is just Ko Soto Gari or the minor outer reap. And with shoes, these types of techniques are actually much easier. It can just get stuck. And uh, just ask, jiu-jitsu guys with heel hooks and ankle locks with shoes and no shoes and they will tell you the difference so ko sotogari is a very uh, versatile throw you can do it like a hook and you catch it and then ending up sweeping the foot or it can be like a hop whatever it is it can look like a massive foot sweep or it can be like a little hook and as they attempt to retrieve their foot that's when you sweep it Uh, sticking it to the other foot Kohara is one great example and here of course the Japanese team uh, the females particularly so Tashiro and uh, Tonaki many of them of course Shishime who recently retired was also great at this technique so imagine this with shoes I would think it's much easier so um, and here is another one and uh, the other one was of course the inner uh, minor reap he was also very good at it again the shoes i would say play a big role and the entanglement with the upper body can also 
help because it really minimizes that distance and it makes those throws much easier now i know people say you have much uh, wide range of throws with the jacket of course when i talked about the difference between the jacket and without the jacket but what i'm trying to say is when you do get that distance very close traditional gripping like in judo it's much harder to achieve a throw with than the elements of you know without the jacket so um with the gi and i'm sorry the overhook and the underhook so here look at this inner reap look at the flexibility of his ankle and it just sticks to the back of the foot of his opponent or the heel and he gets a great throw so it is the minor inner reap or ko uchi gari here you see this kodokan video so this technique either opens up to a lot of throws or in and of itself is a great um throw so um as you can see you have to create like a spoon shape with the foot and notice the work of the hands so you have the lapel that's really pushing to the other side while the sleeve goes down to try to put the weight on the foot that you are about to reap and then it's like a tripod with a missing foot it just topples and that's what happens so the work with the hands is actually very important just like when you do an overhook the goal is to really crush down the shoulder and by extension destroy the posture and this is the goal so kazushi is to really collapse and crumble the posture that's what it actually means it doesn't mean strictly unbalanced so like i always say the the posture is a reflection of your own uh, mental attitude in the fight so a lot of people when you see their shoulders hunched and they just almost look like tense that's when you know that they're gonna lose way before the uh throw ever comes so the fight just it's technically finished with the throw but if you look at it closely it's the posture that tells the whole story so um, here you can see he was just absolutely amazing with his legs his entanglements the overhooks and just going following the motions of what they give him some if you see from the parterre they hug him they try to spin him around that's where he takes that momentum for anything like his signature o soto makikomi here you see and he was just absolutely insane five olympic you know runs um bronze medal at the world championships truly underrated and here you see a great wrestler so if you have anything to add let me know down below this was shady and thank you for listening